Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be learning how to use a kinetic typography template to create a lyric video. Now, let me just get this out of the way right off the bat. There's no one right way to create a lyric video like this. You've probably seen a bunch of different ways that people have gone about creating videos like this and displaying their lyrics, and some of them are incredibly simple. The Chainsmokers, for example, have their song Closer, which has 2.5 billion views, and all they're doing is waving a camera in front of a piece of paper, changing the blending mode so that the text is the only thing that you see, and then just going through the song line by line. At the end of the day, it's way more important to do what you think looks and feels best for your particular song, rather than just what somebody else says looks the best. For me, I'm gonna be using a song that's really upbeat and cheerful, so I'm gonna be choosing a template that matches that look and feel. And this one is gonna serve my purposes perfectly. And it's also a motion graphics template, so that's gonna make it really easy just to drag and drop in and start using immediately. If you wanted to check out everything that we have, we have countless different kinetic typography templates that you can use for your own projects. And if you wanted to do everything custom yourself, you can totally do that. I'll link you to a couple other tutorials and resources we have for creating text animations and also a video on the basics of text, including how to even choose a font to begin with. But with that out of the way, let's dive into Premiere Pro and take a look at how to create our lyric video. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get these motion graphics templates into Premiere. So let's go to our essential graphics panel and then go down to the bottom right to this icon and click to install. Navigate to where you've saved them on your computer and click to install your selected template. Our template has 16 different variations, so once I've installed all of the templates, they should show up in your essential graphics panel within the browse section here. Now that those are installed, we can drag and drop them onto our timeline and we can start to look through them to see which ones work for our song. What can really help if your computer is running slow is to drop the playback resolution down to one half, one quarter, or even one eighth so that you can see the timing and playback smoothly. So here you can see that right from the start, we've got all of the animations and everything already constructed and it looks great. It's as if most of the work has been done for us because well, it has, but to start actually shaping these to what we need, we'll have to get our song down first. So let's place it down and choose a nice section for us to use as our example. The chorus should do nicely. So now comes the part where we decide what animation would work for what section. So looking through these, I'm looking for animations that'll match the cadence of how the words are spoken in the song. In the first line here, we have two words spoken quickly, and then three words spoken slow one by one. So looking through these templates, number two does pretty nicely. It's got roughly the right amount of words and a sequence that I really like and think that I can use. So let's drop it in and try to line up the first word with the matching word in the music. So now let's go and start to change up these words. All we have to do is highlight the template and go up to the essential graphics panel and move to the edit section. And now from here, we can simply just type in the words as they appear in order in the song. And voila, they appear with our animations in place. From here, we can also make adjustments like repositioning the text in the X or Y axis, changing the size and color, and overall manipulating all of these for each different word in order to construct a framing that we like. I'm going to move these from being off kilter to being nice and evenly spaced, making more of a box rather than a slew of words. But now that it's looking great, there's just two problems we have. We're one word short in our animation, and the text doesn't line up perfectly with the song. So let's address those one at a time. First, let's retime the lyrics so that they actually line up with the song. And for this one, we're gonna use the time remapping tool. Right click on the template and select show clip keyframes, and select time remapping, speed. Now we get a new line here which dictates speed and I'm gonna show you how to use these to retime your clips. The timing is pretty great except for this section here. So I'm actually gonna speed it up a bit by holding Control or Command and clicking here to make a new keyframe right before I want it to speed up. 
Now here at this point, when we click and drag this line to raise or lower the speed, it'll be changed independently from this section here, which will stay the same. So if we drag this section here to be faster, we can see that now it starts normal and then instantly gets faster as soon as it hits this point. But we can make this a little bit more gradual and fluid by dragging this keyframe out so that it makes a gradual increase. So this is what we have so far. It's good, but now we want it to slow back down once this section here is over. So just make another keyframe by holding control or command and clicking at the section that you want it to start going back to normal speed and bring the section back down to 100% and then give it a bit of a gradual fall off as well. And now this is what we have. Cool, it's lining up great. But there's one last thing that we need to address here, which is that we're missing one word here at the very end. Thankfully, that's pretty simple to add with this style here, as I know the font and can just create a piece of text to mimic that style. If you're ever sure of what font your template is using, you can actually just right click the template in your essential graphics panel and go to info and you'll be able to see the font right here. So now knowing that, I'm gonna create a new text layer with Control or Command T, and I'm gonna set it up to look exactly like the text in my template here. Place it down in the exact area that you want it to end once it's done its animation. Match the color, and then once the visual look is complete, now comes the part where you wanna make it actually feel like it's moving in the style with everything else. So I'm gonna slap on a free ease in and out transition from our shifter set. Yes, free. You can download our plugin transitions to try out for free and the shifter set won't have a watermark when you link it up to your free motion array account. So feel free to download these and use them however you want. And I'm gonna use them to make my text have a classic ease in motion. I'm just gonna drop the ease in and out onto the beginning of my clip here and set it to come from the direction that it looks best. For me, it's coming from the bottom. Perfect. So now you might think that we actually want to add the same effect going out, and we could, but the problem is is that the text that's found within the template has its own unique animation, and so it won't match up perfectly. So instead, what I'm going to do here is when the text finishes going through its natural animation, I'm going to take my blade tool and make a cut, and then with my playhead positioned at that cut, I'm going to right click this part of the template and select add frame hold. This will make everything from this point on a still frame, and it won't move unless I do anything to it. Our template stopped in a bit of a different place because of adding the frame hold, so I'm just gonna take the new text and move it over slightly so that it lines up perfectly again. But now comes the magic. We're gonna highlight both of these clips, the template pieces and the new text, and then we're gonna nest them together by right-clicking and selecting Nest. Now I can add the ease in and out transition to the end of this nested sequence, and guess what? They exit at the same time as a single unit. Perfect. But there's a consideration here that you should make. You really have two options when making a lyric video like this. You can have an unimportant background that just adds contrast or maybe a little bit of energy, or you can have an actual scene that you're placing your text over. If it's the first one, you can really just place it in the center and go about your business. But if it's a scene with footage, you may want to consider looking at the best location to place the text within the context of the footage. For example, here's an empty section here at the top left where it feels like the text could sit and naturally feel like it's filling in the empty space. So I'm going to place the text here so that when it's all said and done, the animation is right here in this section. Since we've nested all of our text together, you can just resize and reposition it, and everything will move as a single unit. But depending on the motion of the template, you might find that it doesn't stay exactly centered to where it started. So you might need to keyframe position and scale in order for it to start and end exactly where you want it to. Placing these keyframes wider apart and setting an ease in for the ending and an ease out for the beginning will help it to more naturally integrate within the animation of your template. And guys, with all that said and done, the first line of our song is complete. When the light's gone. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the three bars of the chorus to show you how you can take advantage of these templates with a few more ideas. Now let's go through the same process we did for the first verse. Highlight the template and type in the words that we'd like to see. 
and I'll change up my text so that the color and position is what I like. But this time, I'm actually gonna leave everything a little bit more centered. This is because I'm gonna show you a different way to help keep the footage in the background from being distracting, and also making it a little bit easier to read the text. You can add a Gaussian blur to the footage below your text and keyframe it to fade in so that it looks like our lens is racking to view the text which is closer to the viewer. This allows you to start looking at the footage you'd like and then switch the focus to the new text as it animates on screen. Then just line it up and make sure that it's in sync with the rest of the music, using timer mapping adjustments if you need. And if you need to slow these elements down, you can actually do that pretty easily. Typically, these motion graphics templates will be based in 60 frames per second. This means that you can slow down your footage to as much as 40% speed and still have it appear as if it was based at 24 frames per second. Basically, you can go as low as 40% while still having your animation come across as smooth and not choppy. It just gives you more leverage and flexibility on how you can time your text to the music. But even if you add a Gaussian blur, sometimes you might run into a situation like this, where you have trouble seeing the text over top of the video, but you don't want to change the color. Maybe you like it the way it is, or you have branding restrictions. So in addition to adding a bit of a blur, you could also change the color of the clip slightly. Highlight the footage layer and go up to Lemetri color. And I'm going to go down to the curve section here and drop down the curve slightly. And you can see how much easier it is to read the text now. And guys, with that, we've managed to create a simple and effective lyric video in no time at all. And here's a little trick to make sure that you can save even more time. Once you're done that chorus or verse, and it repeats later in the song, you can just take your work and highlight it, and hold Alt or Option, and drag it to that new location, where the same section repeats, making all your work even more effective. And guys, that's just been a quick tutorial to help you create kinetic typography quickly and easily for a lyric video, or really anything else you want to create time-specific text for. This technique also works great for segments of speakers giving a lecture, to make sure key points land, or that people scrolling through videos on autoplay can actually read your words if they're too lazy to actually play your work. But guys, we hope you can really get a lot out of these techniques we showed you. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.